All right, so um, so I'm going to share some stories, and then I'm going to I'm going to give you some examples. So I'm not going to just tell you about what's going on and about what I know about interpretation. I'm, but there's a lot of information. There's so much information, which is why I have an online school. Now, the school is actually nowinterpretthis.com, but that's the school. So if you're not in the school, you're not going to find a whole lot there. But you can look around. There's a public area there. There are some videos for how-tos like, uh, you know, who's your ex in, in dreams? Uh, who are the people who try to kiss you? Why do they kiss you in the dreams? Things like that. There are some good common things. And then there's also an opt-in on the school site uh, for a, you can download an ebook which is called Common Dreams Explained. And it's got 30 or 40 dreams and it's kind of cool, just a little e-booklet. And you can download that if you want to sign up for the newsletter. Now, I'm not much of a, I'm not a great promoter, but I want to explain things and just give you the opportunity. If you are interested in being involved in our public, we have a monthly public event, which is called the drop-in, and it is just that. It's the drop-in. So what happens is you can get online on the school site, but you're only going to see it, the event, when it's actually open. But if you sign up for the reminders, you'll get a reminder every month for that, and it's a free event. You have to get on the school site and register and then come on for the event. And then what happens is you get to ask the chat boss. We have great chat bosses, our sweet Darla. Darla McLaughlin is out in the Spokane area. She is actually the dream director of the school. Uh, Del Hungerford, some of you guys know Del because of Healing Frequencies. Yay, Del! Hi, Del! We love you. Uh, she's out in Moscow, Idaho, and then Pauline Henning. Yay, Pauline! She's in Denver. They work on the prophetic, they direct the prophetic side. So what we do is we teach dream interpretation and the intuitive. Now, I'm just going to warn you in the beginning not to get your pants in a wad, <laughs> right? Because I work with a lot of secular people, associations. That's who I'm called to. Now, a quick background. Oh, okay, then, yeah, I'm already on the rabbit trails. Okay, but if you want to be in the drop-in, you can ask for what we call readings. It's a prophetic word. So you get on, you get in the queue, and then you can leave, and they put your name in there, and then all of your readings come from our interns and our awesome staff, which are highly anointed, and then they send it to you in your inbox on the site in a transcript. So you don't have to hang around. All you have to do is get on there, ask for a reading. Yes, I'd like a reading, please. But you have to register, so you have a username and all of that, and then it's a good thing if you remember your password, all right? So that's the drop-in. So if I were you, I would sign up. If you're going to sign up for a newsletter, make sure you sign up for the drop-in reminder. That's the most important thing. And that's every third Saturday, third Saturday of every month. Now, on the school site, we have an online school to help people with, basically, I'm not going to, I don't teach, I teach dream interpretation, but I don't teach dream interpretation interpretation or how to be prophetic that stuff is already in you you understand you already have the gifts in you that comes with right there irrevocable that comes with your design and your original dna period you have it but this is the deal an awful lot of the body of christ and the secular world which <laughs> newsflash they have gifts too Amen. right those people don't know how to use the gifts a lot of times, or what to do with their gifts. In the church sometimes, not just in the church, but sometimes the traditional traditional religion will, will train people to prophesy and then never release them to prophesy, right? So that's not the way we work. But that gift is already in you, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to help, like, mine the gift. I want to find the gift. Oh, there it is, right? There's the diamond. And then we're going to try to pull that out. We're going to help refine it. And then the, the whole reason for the school is to help you with a language. You're going to learn another. How many of you know when you learn dream interpretation, you have to learn a new language? I mean, like, seriously, it's not English. It's very metaphoric. 
It's full of riddles. It's full of word plays. And it's just the way God talks. Because he wants you to be so dependent upon him that you don't have the answer to everything and you don't have a stock answer. Right? So I'm never going to tell you, well, it's just this or it's just that. Because God's bigger than that. Right? So I'm never going to try to put him in a box and say, okay, fit here. Right? So we're going to try to allow him to be who he is. Bigger. Right? So that's what the school is about. That's, that's what's going on. That's what that's about. It's really about you learning a language that will help you present what God puts in you for your giftings. It, it just helps you with delivering your language. Because how many of you know, if you go out thumping a Bible on the street corner, right, and, and try to minister sometimes, people will run from you? I mean, I've had that happen a lot. It may not happen to you. Maybe I'm just scary or weird. I mean, hello, right? But I guarantee you, people never, ever, ever turn down a prophetic word if they understand it. Now, they do turn it down sometimes when they've had a bad experience. But once they understand the heart's intent, right, God's heart's intent, his love, they're never going to say no. That's where you hook them. And see, God's relational, so we have to be relational, right? The word doesn't say go out and save all the world. Is that what it says? It says go out and disciple all men. Okay, you got to have more than five minutes with them to disciple them. But if what you have is five minutes, which happens very often and every day, then what you want to do is you want to speak God's original heart's intent over that person so that what you do is you open a portal that releases his power in their life so they walk away. They don't know your name, but they have certainly opened this, this space where they no longer have a brick wall around them. They have a, a portal open where the Spirit then can just pour into them, right? How many of you have had co your coffee this morning? Jill, right? Your coffee cup holds 12 ounces, 8 ounces, 16 ounces, 24 ounces. It holds what it holds. People are the very same way. You hold what you hold. You have the revelation you have until you have a new one. Just let that soak in a little bit. It's kind of profound, right? So if you are trying to pour 16 ounces of God into a 12-ounce cup. Do you know what's going to happen? You're going to make a mess. Right? And you're going to be standing in coffee. Oh. Right? That's the way it works. But that, isn't, that the, isn't that what we do sometimes? We try to just, oh, here, I got 16 ounces for you. Bam! They're like, what? I only got eight ounces here. My capacity is eight ounces, right? If your capacity is eight ounces, you want to give them eight ounces of the love and the intent of God's DNA. The word says every human being, all mankind, was made in his image. If that is true, then his DNA, there's a deposit of his DNA in every man, woman, and child. Now, I'm really going to get into your theology, right? Because that means whether you're a believer or an unbeliever, you still have God's DNA in you. Do you know how God draws people? The word says, you know, by the spirit and by his goodness and by his blessings and we all those things. But he draws. What he does is he pulls, he woos that little deposit of his DNA in your spirit. That's how he gets you. Because you're like, oh my gosh, I've never known love like this. And who's going to turn down genuine Authentic love, unconditional love. Who's going to turn that down? You'd have to be nuts. <laughs> See, once people understand that God is love, and that's what you're 
engaging them for and approaching them for, they'll always be happy to see you. We do uh, New Age fairs occasionally, outreaches. We set up a little booth and we have a sign that says readings, right? Destiny readings. They come by and they're like, what's a destiny reading? Well, we're going to talk to you about your destiny, right? Don't you believe God wants to talk to every human being about their destiny? Do you believe everybody in the earth and even in the church knows what their destiny is? Yeah, we're all looking for that answer, right? It's like, where is that answer? Right? And, and it's been in you, right, from before the foundations of the earth, right? Before the foundations of the earth, you were a spirit with him. Right? He didn't have to. He, he, he already created you. You were already with him in spirit. Right? But he then released you, knit you together in your mother's womb. Right? Because you had purpose in the earth. You had purpose in the earth. Right? Kelly was talking about some of that last night. We have purpose in the earth. How are you going to come into agreement and co-labor with God in that purpose? Family lines have purpose. Cities have purpose. Churches have purpose. Organizations have purpose. States, nations have purpose. Individuals have purpose. But how are you going to operate in the corporate body of purpose if you don't even know what your own is? And contrary to popular belief, God is really not withholding that information from you. Right? He's not withholding. But... It's happening in your dreams, and you're missing it. It goes over your head. Like Lisa was saying, you're, you, you know, sometimes we're saying, well, I had too much pizza last night. Uh, Jenny said, I had too much wine last night. <laughs> had too much pizza last night, right? I told on her. Woo! Bad, bad piggy. I told on her. Right? But that's the way it happens. We, we don't know what to do with it, so it's easier just to... Not worry about it. But let me give you another 411. It's going to really set you free. You're going to love this. God is God. Right? And, and you're just man. But you're his most precious creation. Right? That's why your number's six. Right? The number of man is six. You were created on, on the sixth day. You were his most popular and his most beloved creation. He loves you above all things right? Individually. He's big enough to love us all individually. But he's God, and he's going to do what he wants to do, and all we really, our job, because see, we're, the church sometimes is very much into this perfection thing. I, my background is I come from, uh, well, my father, both my grandfathers, I come from a line of Baptist preachers. God love the Baptists. I love the Baptists. They're into the word and evangelism, that was a foundation I could not have done without. Love it. But my mother was a little Italian charismatic. And when my daddy wasn't looking, she used to take me to Dallas. I'm a Texas girl, in case you guys hadn't noticed. But I live in Tacoma, Washington, thank you, Jesus, where it's not hot. She used to take me to, to hear Catherine Kuhlman. My daddy was not amused, right? So I sort of had, I had the balance of both, but there was conflict in the middle of it, right? So my destiny had conflict all over it. Does your destiny have conflict all over it? Right? That's the way it is. That's the way it works. So it's like right there in front of you, and you know you're created for something, and you might even have some, some inklings. You might have some little sparks. You might have some, some ideas, you know. But how do you get there? And a lot of that strategy is in your dreams. A lot of the questions you're asking God are being answered every day. He's like, I said that last night while you slept. Right? We sometimes get into this understanding where we think God only speaks one way. And then he speaks to us for a season, and we think, oh, that's the only way he's ever going to speak to me. Not. He's multidimensional. He's multifaceted. Right? He's multifunctional. He's over here doing one thing, and while this thing is happening, ten other things 
right, are happening at the same time, right, all at the same time, because that's the way he's made. He knows how to get things done. So this is the part that's going to set you free. God is God. You are man or woman. Well, men, right? All of the work is really up to him. Yeah. See, you can't do anything that's going to make it better or more effective. You have to let him do all of the work, and this is your job. Very important. This is your job. You have got to keep showing up. Amen. No matter what comes against you, you have got to show up. If you just continue to show up in radical obedience, I promise you, you will get to your destiny. Right? You will get there. It's not, it is hard, but it's not brain surgery. Right? It's not nuclear science. It's so, it's so simple. God's simple. You just keep showing up and I'll do the rest. So this is the deal. All of that to set you up for when you have a dream. You don't have to get all wound up about it and get all worried about every detail, right? You don't have to get all wound up. He will, he will have you re remember it when you need to remember it. Now, you need to do your part. Your part is to have the Now Interpret This Dream Journal, which is, by the way, this is not a book. It's a dream journal. It's a journal. So you write in it. I'm not the one writing in it. You're writing in it right? But it's a great template. So you have this next to your bed with your pen and whatever else you sleep with, you know, your stuffed animal or your lovey, whatever, I don't know, right? <laughs> but those things you've got, but you've got to be disciplined in attending to, right? Giving attention to the gift, right? If you don't give attention to your prophetic gift, it's not probably going to go anywhere. It's going to stay eight ounces, right? It's only going to grow if you give attention to it, right? That's the way it works. So I'm releasing you from a bunch of, oh my gosh, I'm not perfect. I must not be doing it right. I'm releasing you from all of that now. In fact, I'm just going to pray over every one of you. Just every one of you just kind of lift a hand. Just say, I'm receiving, right? I'm receiving. Father, right now, I release and everybody on Facebook or anybody else watching, watching, even delayed, there's no time or distance with God. Woo! Mm. I just release right now everything that has been hanging on and all of the false words and banners and, and phrases and things that were believed, that were received, that were come into agreement with. I release all of that stuff to fall off now of every one of us. False obligation. False responsibility. False titles. Yes, amen. amen. False titles. I'm not that. Come on, I am what the word of the Lord says I am. Come on, that's all I'm going to be, and I will fulfill it. I will live the fullness of my days, and I will fulfill it. I will be woman, right? Hear me roar, right? Right? Now, just think of your, just think of the top of your head. There's a, an interesting, this, I had an interesting, dreams are fantastic. I wish I had hours and hours to share them with you. There's so much you need to know. So maybe you need to look at the school. I don't know. But this is the way your, your uh, physiological body is actually built. I had this dream one night. I was going to, to the chiropractor the next day because I was having migraines. I'm traveling a lot, I travel a lot, and, and I was traveling a lot, there was a lot of stress, and a lot going on, and I'm having migraines, and I'm, and the problem is with a migraine, when you get really, really sick and you're, you know, tossing the cookies, you can't get on the plane, they won't let you on the plane, that's a problem, especially if you're trying to get out of a country, you know, you get out of, so you can get home, right? So, oh, it's going to be one of those mornings. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I just went into the zone. Wow. Jesus. All right. So the way your anatomy is, your 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 physical body is built is your spinal cord has all of the fluid right that runs in your spinal cord. It's an electrical system. 
Oh, Jesus. Oh, okay. Uh, FYI, somebody, I'm going to need the box of Kleenex, please. Uh, spoiler alert, when the spirit falls, I weep, so get over it now, okay? I snort, I snivel, you know. Snot will go everywhere. Thank you so much. I, I just have to be real. That's all I can do. Okay, this is the deal. This, this is so, God is such a genius. I love that because I'm like clueless, right? I'm so oblivious. I'm like, ah. Uh. I've been telling everybody at the at this weekend that I feel like uh, Goldie Hawn in Overboard. You know, they pull her out of the barrel. She's like, ba 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 ba. Yeah, right. So your spinal fluid, your spine is like an electrical system. It's your power system, right? It's your system where all, everything happens there. But if that fluid does not go to your brain, right? If it's not connected to your brain, where your brain then can send, system, send orders right into your spinal uh, column so that your column then knows, oh, I have to move my arm or you got it. I'm not a doctor. I don't have all of the technical, but I understand enough to tell you what I'm going to tell you. So this is the deal. There's a hole in the back of your skull at the occipital, right? Okay, you have to have a hole in the back of your skull because your spine has to fit into your skull and connect to your brain. This is exciting stuff. So I have a dream before I go to the chiropractor, and I'm hearing the word foramina magnum. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> have no idea what to do with it. Now, did I get my pants in a wad and have to do a war dance to get the interpretation? <coughs> right? We're not going there, right? Let God be God. He'll, he'll deal with it. I get to the chiropractor, and I'm laying there, and he's messing around with my neck and my atlas and whatever, and I'm like, ooh, that feels better. Oh, that hurts. All of a sudden, I decide I'm going to ask him, do you know anything about the foramen of magnum? <laughs> well, yeah, actually. Do you want to know what the, what the Latin interpretation of the medical term foramen of magnum means? It's connected, it's connected to, a, they call it the gateway to God. It's a portal. We are portals. Remember Isaiah says, lift up your heads, all ye gates were gates. Right, where he's talking to us. He's not talking to a city. He's talking to us. Right? So that's the gateway to God. And it's the gateway to our imagination which is how we access God. Now, all of this does come into play when you're in your dreams because what will happen is through your dreams, things will happen like healing, deliverance. I'm not saying you shouldn't seek out deliverance. You should seek out deliverance. But God will actually do some of that in your dreams, and the more attentive you are, the, the more effective it will be. Is that brilliant? I told you he's brilliant. He's a genius, right? So all of that to say he's working all the time. He's talking to you all the time in, in all these different ways. He, he's not going to do it one way. He doesn't want you getting dependent on one thing, right? Because then you're going to go around saying, well, God speaks like this. Well, that's the way we do it in the Baptist church sometimes. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> you know, it's real easy sometimes to get that I know it all kind of attitude. Like, you know nothing and I got it all. Right? I'm the only daughter in this room. We have to be careful, right? We were talking about, uh, Kelly, I was loving this last night. Kelly's talking about discernment. I was like, hot dog. That's one of my favorite subjects, discernment. You know, we're really good at judging. We're not great at discerning. 
Remember the scripture in the, when we're taking communion, we always read that scripture, you know, help me, Lord, to discern correctly the body of Christ. God's always speaking on all these different languages. And if you've studied, I mean, levels, and if you've studied the Hebrew, you know that it doesn't speak on only one level, ever, right? So, yes, he wants us to be able to discern and understand his broken body and what that means to us, the redemption, the fullness of redemption, bringing us back, reconciling us back as mankind to the heart of God. Yes, right? He also wants you to be able to discern your brothers and your sisters correctly and discern where they are. Are they hurting? Where's your empathy? Right? Where's your compassion? Do they need some, they need some help? Do they need some prayer? Do they, discerning, that's, we need that. But that's not something we get a lot of teaching on. So I was super excited, like, ah, Kelly's talking about discernment, yeah. She's my sister. <laughs> right? She's looking at me like, yeah, I don't know today. <laughs> Verdict's still out, but I will let you know at the end of the day. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got it. So let's talk about let's talk about dreams and unlocking your destiny through dreams. Okay. And now I'm gonna run through, you have some background. I'm gonna run through a bunch of information, then we're gonna get activated. Is that okay? Okay, so, and I'm going to pray again. Lord, I ask that you, uh, that you open everybody's portal, right? Everybody, even those watching, everybody's portal. Lord, open us up, Father, where we can hold more. I ask that you enlarge our capacity so that we can receive what is here. Father, that nothing will just overflow and land on the floor, Father, but that we'll be able to hold it all so that we can pour out. So that we can pour out. Thank you, Father. Lord, I speak over all the eyes and all the hearts, and I say clarity come, wisdom come. I ask that you enthrone your spirit of truth over this building now that when I speak, people will not be offended. They'll hear your truth in it. Thank you, Father. They won't, there won't be any distortion or misunderstanding in my words, that the words will fall and take seed in their hearts as you would have it, Lord. Father, direct my words. I yield myself to you. In Jesus' name, amen. He's genius. Okay, now I'm wanting to lift this. L lift us up, Lord. <laughs> look at me. I look like I know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. So uh, people ask questions, lots of questions. Oh, my gosh, I get so many questions, right? People find out I'm in dreams, and they're like, oh. So they have hundreds of questions. Okay, you're going to have lots and lots of questions, and I'm going to answer most of them before I'm done. So just hold on to your seat, all right? So one of the things that people always ask me is, but all, are, are all dreams from God? Well, of course not. Then other people say, well, doesn't the devil send dreams? Well, of course, it's his job. <laughs> it's his job to mess with you. I mean, right? That's the job he, he took on, right? It's his job. But there are other things that will, that will influence your dreams. Is there a demon behind every bush? Of course there is, but you don't have to look at every one of them. <laughs> let's, let's look at what needs to be addressed, Right? Let's, let's address what needs to be addressed. And those are the things that God highlights. So 411 in Texas, girls, that, that's an information call. I'm going to give you the 411, right? I'm going to give you the information. God will highlight what you need when you need it. And he is all about timing. He will give you, how many know... Uh, David finds out he's going to be anointed as king, right? How many years was it till he was actually on the throne? What? So, a long time, right? He was holding on to that, and I'm sure he was thinking, well, that was a great word. Yeah. 
Not feeling that crown yet. Right? I mean, we have to understand that God is God. He's going to do his thing. And his timing is not like our timing. So when he says a day is like a thousand years, I, I think what he's really saying is there isn't any difference in a thousand years or a day to me. Because I can snap my fingers and blow on something. <sighs> the breath of God can change everything in 10 seconds. Right? That's the way he works. So we need to receive what he gives as he gives it. So he's going to nourish us. He's going to give what we need as we're going through our dreams. Now, we're going to talk about some of your dreams, but I'm just going to ask some questions. How many in the, this room have had a recurring dream three times or more over their life? I'm not talking about the last six months. Okay, so a few. Okay. FYI, those are usually dreams connected to your destiny. Right? I'm going to tell you this story. I'm going to tell you a story. I've had a dream three times. Now, this is very rare. I don't have a lot of uh, literal dreams, and I don't have lots of recurring dreams. But, but what was rare about this dream was I had it three times in my life, in my 20s, my 30s, and my 40s. And every time I had it, it was like detail to detail, the same. It never changed. Now, a recurring dream sometimes will be recurring circumstances, but the details won't be the same. That's still a recurring dream. It's like last year I dreamt I was uh, in school, right? That, well, let's do something broad, general, right? And then you have three or four more dreams about school. Well, he's talking about school, but it may look different in every dream. This dream was about my call, and it was the same every time I had it. I've never, ever had that happen again. So my little Mimi, my, my uh, father's mother, was a Baptist preacher's wife, and she was uh, not filled with the Holy Ghost that I know of, uh, didn't speak in tongues that I know of. I never, she's very meek and sweet, you know, she was one of those very darling little grandmothers. And in my dream, she is standing between our two houses on the farm where I grew up. <coughs> Excuse me. And she's facing north. Anybody know what comes from the north? Sometimes judgment, but our spiritual inheritance is in the north. Think of, think of things like, and these things do start connect. It's kind of to start to connect. It's kind of funny. Think of your true north. Why do we say true north? It's a, it is a direction. It's a coordinate, right? That's where your spiritual inheritance comes from. So she's facing the north, and she's got her arms out like this, and there's a little like a fire beneath her, and these embers are like flying around. It's a little bit surreal. She's standing there with her arms out like this, and she's like declaring, and she's like doing major warfare, and she's speaking in tongues, and I'm like, oh, what happened? And she hears me, because I've come to the door, and I've opened the door, and I'm looking out. She hears me. She sees that I'm there, and she stops what she's doing. She looks at me, and she points, and she's, she's like sternly. She, there was nothing stern about her. She sternly says to me, Melody, remember this. It's all about warfare. And I'm like, well, it's not something I wanted to hear. <laughs> Doesn't sound like fun to me, because you know I'm all about having a little bit of fun right? So this, so then she immediate goes, immediately goes back to what she's doing. Now, what she's doing, which I later finally realized, is she's calling in my inheritance. Now, my mother was a prophet, but she never actually walked in it because there was so much persecution in our culture and prophets, well, they're, they don't live anymore. We don't live anymore, right? We are dead. Right? We, I mean, what the heck? You know, God, God he doesn't change, and we're, we're quick to tell you that. However, what he did then, he's not doing anymore. I don't get it. I don't get it, but hey, I, I'm sure there's some reasoning. 
right? So then the second scene of the dream, I'm going through the house with my whole immediate family, and I'm going through each room, and I'm casting out demons. Now, what that dream represented was the house represented and the land which was our land, represented, and this is like a 411, a lot of times land is going to represent your generational line, your bloodline. When God talks about the land, he's all about the land, right? He's all about the generations. He says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's all about the generations, and he's all about the land. But the land represents the generational line, the bloodline, right? So, the house was my family line, and I was casting demons out of each of the chambers or each of the systems, right, the rooms of the house. Does that make sense? See, you have to learn a, a new language sometimes. Like, like if you're going to be a missionary and you're going to go to China or some other country, you're going to have to learn the language if you're going to speak to the people, right? Now, it's fine to, uh, to go to Poland and uh, speak English to everybody and, and lead them to the Lord in English, even though they don't understand a thing you're saying. But that's the way we speak sometimes. We speak a form of semantics that we think, you know, I call it Christian, Christianese, Christianity, you know, we think they understand that because we understand the doctrine and, the, and it makes sense to us because we have the personal connection. But they don't have that, and they don't understand your language. So you're going to have to find a language to speak to them that they understand, or you're never going to get through to them. See, God's trying to send us out of the four walls of the brick-and-mortar church into the marketplace and into the secular world. I know you didn't want to hear that. Right? If you're standing, I mean, I do a lot... I do probably 50% of my ministries in a Starbucks, right? I mean, you just do whatever you do. It's not actually what you do, it's who you be. You just be who you be, right? We have occupations. Occupations are about occupying land, right? What are you occupying? What territory, what mountain, what sphere of influence are you occupying? You've got to occupy and you've got to stand strong in that right? All of this stuff is in your dreams, right? So your occupation is what you do to stand, to take authority in what God has given. But ministry needs to be what you be. You need to do your work and be ministry. If you're doing ministry, you need to rethink that one because that's an old system. You're going to get worn out like everybody else did, and you're going to be a flat tire pretty soon. See, we think it's all about doing, all about that performance thing, and I feel some of that in this room. There's some background of that. You know, oh, my gosh, I didn't do that right. Oh, oh my goodness, I probably need to repent of that. I do some one-on-one one mentoring with people sometimes, and, and I once had a woman say, uh, and this is like our initial interview. It's like a, you know, we're getting to know each other, and I'm, we're trying to figure out whether we're going to work together or not. And, and she says to me, um, you know, I know I'm in rebellion. I'm like, and so you're still there, why? <laughs> like, if you know you're in a room, I'm, I'm confused, I'm a little confused, right? Right? I said, why do you, why, what are you, in, what are you in rebellion about? Well, I know I'm supposed to be writing and I haven't been writing. I was like, you know, God is the worker. He's God. He does it. He makes it all happen. He's the one who has the power. I'm not saying you don't sit down and do what he tells you to do. You got to you got to do what he asks you to do. But when you do, then that will flow. It will come out of you in the right time, in the right season, in the right place. Right? You spend too much time beating yourself up. Right? That's a lot of energy. That's a lot of energy, sisters, I'm just saying, right? 
And this is some of the things, I really sense that some of the things we're talking about, he's saying are in your dreams. It's like, you guys probably dreamt about some of this last night. Who knows, right? I mean, it's like we have these, these we have him talking about this all the time, but we're missing it. We, we think we operate out of what we know. That's, a, that's kind of like a, you know, a, a Greek mindset, right? We're operating out of our intellect, what we know about God rather than, hello, rather than the intimacy, right? I mean, I just met you guys, right? I can talk about you. I can say, well, that lady has a really pretty T-shirt with, you know, cool graphics on it, and, and I saw her last night, and, but I can't really tell you who she is because I'm not intimately relational with her. I don't know her well right? But a lot of times that's the way, that's what's going on. And I'm talking about even if you are a longtime child of God, where your dreams are concerned, sometimes you're ignoring them because you don't realize. And see, most of my intimate moments with God are in my sleep. I'm so serious about myself. I hate it when I can't sleep. It's miserable. I have visitations in my sleep. God gives me directions in my sleep write all of my life's directions. Uh, the first of the uh, journal has about three or four literal dreams, the only literal dreams I've ever had in my life that actually they directed my life. I'm going to tell you about one of them. One time I was needing a job, and so I go to bed praying, Lord, I need a job, right? I get up the next, oh, I have a dream that I get up the next morning, I put on my little blue and white dress, and I go to a store that's not even finished yet. I'll let you guys read all the details. And I tell them, I want to be a fashion coordinator, right? And they're like, how'd you know we needed a fashion coordinator? Uh, so, um, so I wake up, right? And I'm like, okay, well, the only thing, you know, I'm kind of simple and silly about this stuff, but I figure if, if God gives me a dream and I ask for what do I do, I get up the next morning, put on the little blue and white dress. I mean, I don't know what else to do. I mean, how metaphoric can that be? The reason I knew it was about that moment was because I prayed for strategy the night before and I owned the blue and white dress. That is a clue for you guys. If you're carrying a purse in your dream and it's from 10 years ago, then God's saying you've come out of a place where your identity was whatever he's talking about, right? But if you dreamt last night that somebody stole your coach purse that you brought to this meeting, then we got to talk about that because that's about now. That's how that works. Got it? That's how that works. Okay, so the next day I get up, and well, silly me, I put on my little blue and white dress, and I'm heading out to the newest store I know about, and, it, and it's a new mall, but there's all that's there is actually the offices. They haven't even, it's a big retail store, but they haven't even gotten the store, you know, like finished. It's got offices, so I walk in, and guess what? I say, I would like to be a fashion coordinator. <laughs> and the little receptionist looks at me and goes, I'll be right back. She goes to the back offices. She comes back out. The general merchandising manager comes out and says to me, uh, well, we haven't run an ad yet. I'm not sure how you knew about this position, but uh, can you do a fashion show once a day through the whole month of January to launch the store opening? And of course, my answer would be, yes. hello. If God gave me the strategy, he's going to give me the rest, right? He's going to give me, if he gave me the blueprints, he's going to tell me how to do it, right? So I'm certainly not going to say, well, uh, I never have before, but we probably can pull it off, right? Yeah, oh yeah, we can do that, right? But, but that job, it affected the next 10 years of my life. Right? So I wouldn't have wanted to miss that. That wouldn't have been bad. I mean, that wouldn't have been good, right? Okay. So that's just one of those literal dreams. It's how many of you have literal dreams? Some of you do. Yeah, good. All right. How many of you have what you would consider premonitions? Okay, do you know what to do with those? Okay. Those are, um, those are usually for initiatives of prayer, 
right? Uh, I had a friend that uh, dreamt the night before, you know, 9-11, that planes were running into buildings, right? And uh, we talked about it, and then at 9 a.m. that morning, then it happened, you know, September 11th. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Those, and he, and he didn't even, he d had no idea what to do with it. But that was for, inter that was calling you to intercession, right? As a prophetic people, we need to be able to hear God in those things when he's calling us to co-labor with him, right? Ask, what do I do with this? This, this is a, this will really be, this is like the best thing you'll get out of this whole talk. Write these two questions down. You're going to love this. You need to ask two questions of God on a regular basis when something strange happens. What is this for? And what do I do with it? He'll answer you. What is this for? What do I do with it? If you don't ask, he, he's not going to offer. Not, not that he doesn't want you to know. He wants you to engage. Right? He wants you to engage. All right. So let's talk about how the enemy uses your dreams, okay? Now, the enemy is going to use your dreams to attempt to keep you from your destiny or from your call. Yeah, we know that, right? So he has very subversive strategies to keep you off your purpose and off your given course. Now, let me give you a 411 about the enemy. Satan is a lot of things. Stupid ain't one of them. He has been studying mankind for generations. He knows your patterns. He knows your generational patterns because he came up with them. Right? So he is going to send those. How many of you had night terrors when you were little girls? Yeah. Okay. Especially the seers, they start having night terrors. I had night terrors before I could walk. I was always afraid of the dark. I never wanted to go to sleep. I never wanted to sleep alone, right? I was scared to death. Well, what do you do when you get scared? I'm a seer, but I've covered my eyes because I'm scared to death. He's not stupid. He knows what he's doing. So he's going to try to intimidate you from a very early age and always before the age of 12. We've been talking about this because 12 is your coming of age. When the word talks about accountability, the age of accountability, I don't believe it's saying, you know, you don't really understand salvation until you get to the age of accountability and that's 12. The age of accountability at 12 is the, the moment in time in heaven where you are the, it's the why the jews do a bar mitzvah or a bat mitzvah right they're they're preparing their children to come into the fullness of their destiny that's where that came from so he's going to start very very early to keep you from seeing what you need to see right and all we need to do is understand what he's doing the good thing is he really overplays his hand sometimes, right? And he just, he's very repetitive. He's not creative in any way. Only God can create. But he will certainly distort and twist the truth, right? He will do that. So that's what he's doing in your dreams from very, very early. Now, he is going to always set triggers connected to your emotions and your spirit. That happens through trauma. Okay? So there are things that happen in your childhood that you remember, that you don't remember, it doesn't really matter, but that set a trigger, like a hook in your soul, right, for him to play with. That's the way he works. That was all preparation for your whole life to keep you from your destiny. Because if he still has a hold of this hook, he's going to continue to use the hook, right, to keep you from stepping in. Now, the way that happens is, how many of you guys are uh, familiar, I love this woman, with Anna Mendez Farrell? Love her. 
She wrote a book called Regions of Captivity, and you need to read it if you have not. She also wrote a book called Iniquity, and it's about the uh, iniquitous sin in the bloodline. It's not your typical, you know, I fell off the wagon yesterday. It's about generational patterns. It's very good. But Regions of Captivity, you've got to get that book. Also, Sandy Freed wrote a book called Destiny Thieves, which is really good as well. It's required reading on our, in our school. So good. All right, but these are some of the things that, that the enemy will use in your, in your dreams. Oh, my. All right, I chased a bunch of rabbits, didn't I? Um, he begins very early. We talked about that. Uh, but what keeps us from our destiny? There are different elements that he'll use, and, and they're just regular, like, they're his regular, the tools in his tool belt, right? He just, these are the ones he pulls out. Fear is going to be the first one, always. Disbelief. So, by the way, fear, how many of you had dreams with a, a physical paralysis, sleep paralysis? Hello. That is connected to the fear, and what he wants to do is he wants to shut you down. So you can't, right, you can't speak, you can't move. I used to have dreams like that a lot. I'm going to tell you real quick about a dream, and this will this tell you how sometimes healings come through your dream. I had this dream. Jenny, don't let me forget to talk about the dream from last night. Okay. okay, so I had this dream for, I don't know, six months or something where I would be dreaming that there was this entity <clears throat> that was, that was uh, bludgeoning me in my lower back. You have very important organs there. That's your volatile place, right? So, and, and it was just, and it was this old Gothic serpentine, you know, like ancient uh, uh, dagger is what it was. It was so weird. And I would wake up in the morning with literal pain, and I was like, what the heck? right? And this went on like every night for like six months. And I would go into the prayer closet every day and I would be asking the Lord, what is going on? And as I was praying, just in the spirit, just in the spirit, because I didn't even know what to ask. I didn't know what else to, I didn't know what to do. So I, I'm just praying in the spirit. And all of a sudden, something would bubble up in me that was connected to a generational pattern that had been holding me back from my destiny. But of course, I didn't understand all that. I just knew that it was an issue, right? So the Lord would bring it up. I would repent for it, you know, go through some repentance, right? The way we get healed is to repent and to forgive, right? Repent, forgive, right? So I would repent, then I would forgive my forefathers. And every time that would happen, and this, this over this full six months, this was recurring. And so he would bring something else up. He would bring something else up. So long story made very short. Eventually, I began to try to look back because now, remember, it's my, my lower back, my most volatile place. Now, this is about my past. This is about my painful past. How many of you have a painful past? We all have a painful past. That's what the enemy's going after. Hello? He's not stupid. He's going after your painful past. So I would wake up and I would, like, try to but I couldn't even see him. I couldn't even see his face. And then the next day, and remember, in the prayer closet, I'm going through this inner healing stuff, just me and God, right? Holy Spirit's just revealing it to me. Then the next time I wake up, I'm, I'm all the way around, and I can see him, but I can't guard, right, from that ancient dagger. Mm-hmm. Think about that a minute. So then the next time I have the dream, after I've gone through inner healing for three or four things, then the next time I have a dagger too. But see, I'm not skilled in using it. So I'm like, but he's still beating me up. Like he's beating me up, right? I can't, I can't fight back because I'm not skilled. I'm not trained. I'm not trained. I'm not prepared. The next time I have a sword, but I don't know what to do with that either. The last time I had the dream, ladies, I had a lightsaber and I kicked the boy's butt. I never had that dream again. That's how you know that you've walked through the healing. Is that brilliant? I couldn't make this stuff up. Right? He's a genius. 
So fear is his, that's like his number one A, it's, it's like his, it's his A game, it's A team, his A game, right? That's the first thing he goes to. Uh, so that's going to paralyze, it's going to cause you to be stagnant, fear is going to shut you down. It's going to take your sound, your frequency, your voice, it's going to take your voice, right? Disbelief. Disbelief is, is a planted, subver is planted subversively, subversively to redirect you or to cause you to give up. You're, you're, it's, it's like this. Oh, that looks like a good idea over there. I'm going to go over there and do this. Now, it's not what God's leading you to, but it's not a bad idea, right? Now, FYI, I am not telling you to sit at the throne every day and not move for fear until you hear the Lord because the, the word says that he directs the path and the footsteps of the righteous man but if you stand in still sister he can't direct you you got to be moving and listen he's God he's big enough to nudge you right your motives and your intent and your inclination are all toward him right my love Right? My devotion, my energy is all God. Fulfill my destiny. Well, if that's your heart, he's going to do it. If you take a wrong turn, you're going to be all right. Amen. Right? So don't sit there and worship. No, no, no. I love the worship. For 24-7 and don't do nothing. Every time I go to the throne room and I get to that place, do you know what he does with me? He's like, I'm so glad to see you. We talk, right? He gives, that, you all have been there. He loves on you. Then what does he do? He picks you up. He slaps you on the butt and says, here, take this out. <laughs> Hello. It's not just for you. Kelly said it last night. It's not all about you. It's not all about you. That fear that you're feeling you know, oh my gosh, I couldn't get on stage, which, by the way, scares me, right? Right? I don't want to get on stage. I don't want to be out there in front. Well, you know what? It's not about you. Listen, I ran from the call for 16 years because my mother was never accepted. And interesting fact, she died at 63, very young. She never, I'm not saying she didn't fulfill for her season, her generation. She fulfilled what she could, but boy, I would have liked to have seen that powerful woman, right? So I'm like, well, I want it all. There are there any mantles hanging in the air, laying in graves? Okay, I'll take them, right? Why not? Why not me? Why not you? Right? I can share. Did you know I can share my mantles with you? I'm just throwing some mantles out there. <laughs> right? God wants us to have what we need so that we can operate in the fullness of who we are. Not this little measure. Right? The fullness. The fullness. Right? So I think I finished that thought. I don't really know. Disbelief. Okay, we talked about that. That's going to cause you to give up. You're just going to give up. It goes into hope deferred and lots of disappointment and other things. Okay, that's how that works. Trauma. We talked about trauma. Trauma is based on experiences and um, things that are in your dreams that he plants. He plants things in your dreams. Now, if God can take you on visitations and transportations and translocations, whatever, I don't know all the words, right, while you're sleeping, right, then the enemy can kind of get in there sometimes too, right? So those things are happening in another realm, but your body's sleeping, right? The enemy tries to do the same thing. So he's going to come in, he's going to plant seeds, false seeds, and then you're going to wonder why you can't fulfill the destiny because you're carrying a false seed, which I think at some point we might be going to deal with some of that.
I think Lisa mentioned. Okay, so he's planning those things in your dreams, in your subconscious. Now, if I was a psychologist or a psychiatrist, I'd be say in your in your cognitive brain, in your subconscious, right, where you, where it's back there. And yes, you do process through things like your job and all those things in your dreams, absolutely. But the reality is, there's a lot more to it than just I was working yesterday in my dream. You got to be listening, even about work. Sometimes God's giving strategy about those very things which you're looking for, exactly. right? So you have to be looking for that. Now, don't get mad at me about this word. I'm not talking about stupidity, but ignorance. He uses ignorance. This is lack of revelation, right? Lack of knowledge. You only know what you know, right? You have the revelation you have till you get another one. All right, this is a big one, shame and regret. Oh, my goodness. Women, more than anybody, come into agreement with that shame and regret. Oh, my gosh, I should have, I should have, and I really should have been a better mother. But you know what? I wasn't. And God forgave me, and all I can do is continue and be the fullness of who I am called to be. Right? Listen, God stands in your present, and he reaches into your past and into your future, and he brings all of that together, right? And in our present, we have to be present to what's happening. Like, we have moments, like windows of opportunities, Right, we have moments. Uh, portals are sometimes geographic. Sometimes they're people. Sometimes they're regional. They're territorial. Right? They're you know what I'm saying? There, there are all kinds of different types of portals. But one of the thing, one one portal is time. Right? Time. Right? So we have a moment. We are in a moment together. Now tomorrow and for the rest of to that today. Right? Now this will never look like this again. So you must be, we must be present to this moment, to this Kairos moment, and receive what is given us in this Kairos moment because this is, this is the moment we get. Now, you'll have other fantastic and better moments this weekend, but I'm saying you have what you have, right? And you have to be present to what he's given because it's a window. It's just a window, so be present to that, okay? The other one is, so let's don't be looking back in the back and, you know, holding on to regret and remorse. Another one that women have a problem with, probably everybody, but uh, penance and self-blame. Oh, my, it's a big one. This is a targeted assignment to keep you so introspective that you're missing all of the joyous stuff that God's trying to pull you into, you can only see, you're like you're always waiting for the other shoe to drop, right? Oh, oh, thank you so much. And unworthiness is one. It's a tool he uses to get you to settle. You just settle. This will be all right. I mean, it's not exactly what I was hoping for, but it's, it's good. It's all right. Listen, settling will keep you out of your destiny more than anything else in his toolbox. That's the way it works. You do not want to settle. It's wicked. Yeah, so uh, do all dreams come from God? Of course not. We talked about the soul. The soul, because of the trauma and the things that the enemy right tries to plant in us those things we operate in our dreams things will happen connected to our soul those soulish issues now those are not bad and by the way I believe all dreams are good all dreams are a communication right so all dreams are good if it's giving me strategy against the enemy hey I'm still good with it hello I need that Right? It doesn't all have to be, you know, I'm walking through heaven and, you know what I'm saying? I need some strategy so I can fight. Right? So I can fulfill my call. We, we got to have that. 
Okay, and then the enemy, yes, he sends strategy to steal your call and your destiny, but you're going to begin to recognize them, right? And then God sends dreams. Now, when you have a revelation dream, you know, those are usually like super vivid and they're major. I mean, you can't, you don't miss them. You, you just, you don't miss that. If God's really, if he's really going to take you to heaven in the dream or, or, or something like that, that's not, that's not one of those, you know, ambiguous things. <clears throat> You're going to know you've been, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> There's not going to be a question that you were there. Now, the interesting thing about revelational dreams is because God doesn't really, he speaks English for you, right? He speaks in your colloquialisms too, <clears throat> right? But he, he speaks a spiritual language. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. So I do have water, but, but this is the deal. Have you ever had a dream that was so revelational you could not put it into words? It's because there are no words. Not in our language. Right? Not in our language. So what he's going to do is he's going to, you're going to have to allow him to give you an interpretation that you can put in English so that you can share if you're supposed to share. Some dreams are to be held for a time, right? For whatever God is going to do. I know, how many of you know Praying Medic? Praying Medic's a good friend of mine. He, he's like, um, you know, he'll have a dream. He's like, I, I had this crazy dream last night, uh, but I, I'm not sure I can share it. I don't know if it's one of those I can share. But, it, but he'll talk about what came out of it. Yeah, but it's I, like I won't show you, show you all the details, you know. He's cool. All right, so they come from your soul. They come from the enemy. They come from God. They can come from the triggers of your trauma. They, those all connect to your soul. All of those things can happen. And, yes, it can be processing through things cognitively, absolutely. But that's kind of a no-brainer, right? So we don't spend a lot of time on that. All right, logistics. Let's talk about logistics. Uh, oh, so last night I dreamed. Jimmy, thank you so much. But it was really weird because some, some nights I write down six, eight dreams. I mean, I'm serious about my dreams. And they might have two or three, you know, scenes apiece. You know, so some nights I'm very busy. <laughs> right? So you're going to love this. So last night I dreamed that I was concerned about, I'm going to just, yeah, that I'm concerned about the power having gone out. I was very concerned about the power having gone out. We had to be very cautious not to use out. Listen, close your eyes and listen to this. With your spirit, not your mind. I'm going to start over. Close your eyes. I was concerned about the power because it had gone out. We had to be cautious not to use outlets for electrical devices without the full measure of the power being on. Because it was going to blow up. All right, so then I wake up at 4.05. Now, a lot of times, and I keep a digital clock close to me, a lot of times your digital clock is going to be an address. So I put in, we love Google, right? I'm a big, you got it. sometimes you got to do some research, right? So I type in, uh, now it's probably not going to be, 405, I looked at it. You got to hear from the Spirit. There's no stock answer. You look at it and you see 45, 405, 40, right, colon 5. Okay, so I type in 40, colon 5 in Bible. What comes up? Ezekiel. Now, Ezekiel, it's all about they're building the temple, though, right? They're building the temple. They're measuring. They're measuring. So that's about weights and measures. I'm not sure that I'm not, but this is the way it works. I'm not sure that resonates. Okay, but if it doesn't resonate, then go to the next one. Find one that resonates by the spirit. Hello? Always co-labor in your interpretation with the spirit. So the next one that comes up, hello, Isaiah. Guess what that says? And the glory of the Lord will be revealed. Yeah? Right? And all people will see it together. 
together. That's a moment where, right, that's a moment where all of humanity, right, sees with one eye, right, as in unity, because he shows it to everyone. All people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord is spoken. Well, that settles it for me. <laughs> the mouth of the Lord spoken. How many of you know if God did all, made everything, created everything with the sound of his voice, voice and his <sighs> breath, then his frequency is a big deal, right? Seneca Sherbin talks about her, in her flower essences, she talks about uh, Genesis where the Holy Spirit is hovering, brooding. I, I like the word brooding, but it, part of it says hovering, and she did some research, and that word actually translates to relate to vibration. God is a vibra the Holy Spirit hovering. That's vibration. That's frequency, sisters. Yeah, I'm seeing the joy fall on some of you guys. You're like, ha, 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 right? You need to talk to Seneca about that because that is a good teaching. I love it, right? But he's all about frequency, sound. I'm not just talking about your voice. I'm talking about Arthur Burke talks about the presence anointing. How, how many of you have heard that teaching, right? You walk into a room, you, you don't say a word, and somehow you're changing the atmosphere. Hello? You're made of 78% water. And your water is vibrating. <laughs> and your frequency is being released. Right? Sometimes when I travel, I carry tuning forks, and I love the 528. Right? The 528, love. It's also, the New Age says that... Uh, the 528 is DNA repair. Well, isn't that brilliant, and doesn't that make sense? Sense! You know, because people are like, oh, I don't want to go into the New Age. That's, whoa, that, whoa, I don't want to get deceived. Oh, God forbid. Right? Right? I, I don't want to be deceived either, but this is the deal. The Holy Spirit talks to, like, anybody he wants to. <laughs> I know, that was a revelation to me. Because... You know, in my call, I mean, I used to believe that he only talked to, like, special people. Right? The people who fasted and prayed and traveled and did missions and, right? That's not the way it works, is it? He's so big, right? So you have this frequency. How many of you have seen the movie Inception about dreams? <laughs> How many have seen it more than once? All right, then you know what I'm talking about. Because you can't see that, that movie once and get anything out of it. You're like, whoa! It's like a roller coaster ride. Ugh, two hours, you're sitting like this on the edge of your seat, right? How many remember the number on the hotel room? <laughs> Such a prophetic movie. That, 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 the, their final kick, remember the kick to wake them up? This is about, this movie is about dreams in three layers. A dream within a dream within a dream, which God does some of that, and the enemy does, I mean, it happens, right? But this is a great movie because this guy's having to face all his demons in his dreams, right? And it's actually somebody else's dreams, right? But he's having to face all this. It's like, you're not going to get away from that. You're not going to get by that. You're going to have to deal with it. it. It's not really optional with God, right? But the room that they put everybody in while they were doing this assignment in their dreams, so they have to be asleep, so that they can be in this other guy's dream. And so they're all tied up in this hotel room, and that's where they're going to get their final awake, right, their awakening, so that they're at the end of the assignment, it's all been taken care of. And inception means putting an idea into someone's dream. See, that's what the enemy does. He puts ideas into your dreams. They take hold because they feel like a part of you. That's the way it works. The number on that hotel room is 528. Just saying. I love that movie, Inception. I'm just saying. I like lots of movies. I like the crazy movies. 
All right, so I'm going to tell you a quick story. So see how, see how the digital time related to, now let's talk about this. Okay, I was concerned about the power being off, right? I was concerned about the power being off, and uh, where'd my blah, 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 where'd my dream go? And where'd it go? That's interesting. It was here a minute ago. Really? Okay, well, I don't know where it went. Anyway, I was concerned about the dream, the, the power being off, right? We didn't have the power that we needed. So if someone came in and plugged in an electrical device, something that needed power, it could only be it could only be useful with power, a power device, then it was going to blow up because the power wasn't there. We had to have the full measure of the power before we could plug anything in, right? Because it was going to short it out. Now, is that a little prophetic? So let's pray into that. So, Lord, we thank you that the power's not going off that we have all the power that we need, right? And, Lord, that everything that we need to connect, to plug in, right, where we need to plug in as the devices that we, we are devices for you, right? You use us in the earth. We're conduits for you. So where you're going to plug us in, those things are going to have the full measure of power so that we have the pull, the draw of the power, of the spirit, the fullness of heaven so that we can operate in Jesus' name. See how a little dream that you think means nothing can be really, really full of impact. So I hate for people to miss their dreams. And sometimes you've got, if you're an epic dreamer, right? Lots of people are like epic. They have novels. They dream novels, right? You don't, sometimes the details are, are important, and a lot of times they're not. Until like the second year or whatever in the school, we don't really go into, you know, uh, the details are not that big a deal. You have to focus on what's there in the overall picture. What's God saying in the overall picture, right? Just get the idea so you know how to respond, right? Get what you need so you know how to respond. When you're going deeper and you maybe want to interpret other people's dreams or whatever, then you might want to start understanding more about the details and all of that. Okay? All right. I was going to go over the template in the journal, but I don't think I have time because I have other things I need to do. So there's a template in the journal that's kind of got the who, what, when, where. All of those things are actually important. One of the things that is important that I do want to mention is this. <coughs> Excuse me. It asks for location of your dream. Now, the reason the location of your dream is important is this. For 18 months, I lived in a uh, house up in North Dallas. Um, and for at least a year of that, I woke up every morning at 3.33. How many of you see repetitive numbers? I know you all do. Okay, so 3.33, and it, I was just like, what do I do with this? And then I started seeing, okay, it's Jeremiah, 33.3. Call out to me, and I would tell you great and mighty things you have not known. Hello? Okay, you know what else 33 is, which is very prevalent in all of the United States? Freemasonry. Now, it was very interesting because in that house, the Lord walked me through major major healing and deliverance from Freemasonry. My grandfather, who was a Baptist preacher, uh, was 33rd Order Freemason. In the state of Texas, you, I, the, I, if I'm not mistaken, you used to, there was, a, there was sort of a, an association where they didn't want to uh, uh, ordain you to be a Baptist preacher if you weren't a Freemason. Yeah, it's very interesting, huh? Yeah, so that's a big deal. So what happened was, and, and uh, I think you can get on YouTube and probably hear this in one of my workshops. I have lots of, you can just Google Melody Pash, P-W-S-S-E-H, and you can find all kinds of YouTube videos. But, um, but 
basically what happened was God was delivering me from, oh, I didn't tell you about this recurring dream. Okay, real quick. Uh, I had a recurring dream all my life, all my life, that a group of people were chasing me down, and I knew in my mind that if they caught me, they were going to inject me with something, and I was going to be paralyzed from my neck down, and they were going to, um, they were going to torture me, rape me, abuse me, and then they were going to kill me, but I was going to be awake for all of it, right? Now, I was born in 1956, so we didn't have date rape drugs, so I couldn't have made this up. We didn't have that drug, right? But I always had that dream. <clears throat> well, what's interesting is I later found out when I started doing some research that um, I don't know if I need to say this on the record or not. <clears throat> anyway, let's just say, um, okay, Holy Spirit. Okay, so so this is the deal. That that whole scenario was uh, that's a satanic ritual abuse, right? And I couldn't figure out where that was coming from and why because I'd never had it. Uh, I'd never had. I didn't have an experience like that that caused that trauma. So I couldn't figure it out. I just I couldn't figure out what was going on. So um, anyway, one day I was just interceding, and uh, the Lord began to show me strings, puppet strings, like marionette strings, attached to all of my body, my soul, my spirit, and that I was being manipulated. And I'm like, what? Right? And so the Lord had me. He's so effective, right? He can do something, and, and we don't even understand the efficacy until later. Now, without going into a lot of detail and connecting a lot of things that are not needed right now, there was a sword in the house, you know, like a, a commemorative sword, you know, like for knighting, that kind of thing in the house. And the Lord had me do this sort of, prophetic act with the sword and I had no idea what I was doing you know sometimes you're just ignorant and it's okay as long as you're radically obedient right you need to remember last night Kelly saying you need to give up the need to know listen we've got to relinquish the need to understand because your intellect is never going to correlate with his with who he is you're going to have to just radically say yes lord mary at 15 yes lord here am i yeah okay be it unto me according to your will right that was a weird scenario people right so i am in this house and it's a big house and i'm i'm doing this sort of war dance with this big sword and i have no i, I have no idea what i'm accomplishing i don't know what i'm doing it's all by the spirit Thank God it's by the Spirit. Right? And, and then I'm done, and I'm seeking the Lord, and he's like, <clears throat> I want you to do some research. I'm like, okay, I got to love research. So I get online, and a lot of times where I sleep, especially if something's going on, where I sleep or where I stay, I will look up the coordinates. Google Earth is our friend right? So what is the, I needed to know what the parallel was that this house was on. Guess which parallel it was on? 33. You go, girl. 33. Now, it was really interesting because then as I was seeking the Lord about it, the Lord was saying to me, I have broken that system now off of your life. Yes, it was in the generational line, but I've broken that off of your life. All of that Freemasonry, all of that stuff, where you were controlled by a false identity. Right? The Lord said, you were marked for the kingdom, but it wasn't, it wasn't for the kingdom of God. I was like, well, I was born and raised in a Christian home. How'd that happen? The devil's a lot of things. Stupid is not one of them. He knows your destiny long before you do, which is why he doesn't want you to find out who you are, and you need to find out who you are so that you can kick some teeth in, sister. 
Put on your cowboy boots. Right? Or your army boots. Whatever it takes, put on your boots. Right? So you can walk through all that stuff. Right? Isn't that amazing the way he works, though? All right, real quick, we're going to talk about symbology. Okay, lest you all go into, you know, the what books are best for the symbols, interpreting the symbols, yeah, symbols, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, this is the deal. I start on all of my symbols, I start in the Bible. And I love Strong's Concordance. If I get numbers, any kind of numbers, I'm going to look for either an address in the Word or I'm going to take it to Strong's Concordance, to the lexicon, and I'm going to find out what those numbers, because in Hebrew, numbers mean words, right? I'm going to look at the Hebrew and the Greek, and I'm going to see what resonates. A lot of times there's an answer, which is a piece to the puzzle of your dream, in that, right? So if he gives me three more than three numbers consecutively, I take that straight to lexicon, okay? So uh, you just Google, you know, Google, you can Google all that stuff, you know, Strong's Concordance, you know. Now, also, you need to be doing your research by the Spirit. So I start in the Bible, so you can do the, what is it? Blue Letter Bible and Gateway and all of that. We've got lots of lots and lots of resources, but I always go first to the Scripture. But the next thing I'm going to do is, like, if I get a word I don't under I don't understand how it fits. I may know that I may know the definition, but I don't really understand how it fits. I'm going to go ahead and look it up anyway. I'm going to look at all the definitions and I'm going to see which one God highlights right? Give Holy Spirit the opportunity to speak to you. Don't just use your head. Your brain's a great thing and you need to use it, but we also need to really be working by the Spirit, okay? Now, I believe that there, and there are great books. I, my favorite writer of all of that stuff, and, um, and Sandy Freed actually has one too, I think, but Ira Milligan does a great, I love his stuff. He does, you know, sort of a writing about dreams, and then he gives you all of these um, symbols and interpretations and with scripture. Um, 411, we have a, a big dictionary on the site that you can purchase access to forever for $20. But it's not your standard stuff. And even though all of it is connected to scripture, did you hear me? All of it is connected to scripture or God gave it to me by his spirit. I didn't list the scriptures because that's not my gig anymore. You know what I'm saying? I don't spend a whole lot of time in the church. So that's just not the way I talk anymore, right? So, but it's a very cool, there's weird stuff in there like Burger King. Burger King, I love this. Burger, I think Seneca had a dream of Burger King. Of course she would because she eats a lot of Burger King, or she used to, I don't know. Anyway, uh, Burger King is something that has fed you that's become idolatry. Now, also, I believe that every symbol has a positive and a negative. Think of spider. Okay, think of spider. Spiders, right, their deception, everybody will say witchcraft, hidden. They can capture their, cre their prey in a sticky netting. Look at the positive. Uh, a couple of years ago at one of our retreats, we have student retreats, and one of our retreats together, the Lord won us, we always watch a prophetic movie, and then we process through it. It's so much fun. We watch Charlotte's Web. That's a very prophetic movie. You can go to melodypash.com, and you can read my blog about it, about Charlotte's Web, because that, it's actually called The Charlotte's Anointing. You need to look at that. So the, the positive of, of spiders is they move very quickly. They can often be hidden. Now think of Charlotte. She was very compassionate, right? She was very relational. She accepted people who, people, she accepted friends. She made friends unconditionally who were very unexpected, you know. Okay, I'm going to be friends with the goose and the pig and the right? She understood and had compassion because she herself had suffered misunderstanding, being misunderstood. That's the spider. Hmm? Same with the crow, 
or the raven. Listen, God's bringing up the crows and the ravens. I'm just telling you right now, and they are so stinking prophetic. I'm telling you right now, they are prophetic. Right? Who fed Elijah? Who carried the nourishment to him by the brook? Hello? God will use anything he wants to, and he has created all things, and all things belong to him. We need to quit letting, we need to quit. Uh, the Lord told me uh, several years ago that, that sometimes we in Christendom, we're into piracy. I'm like, what do you mean? He, he's like, you, you gather all this stuff. You know, like all this revelation and all this stuff. And then it's all on your boat, right? It's only your, your big boat, the big ship, like the church or whatever. It's you like on the ship, and then you just abandon it. You abandon your inheritance. You walk away, right? And then the true pirates, the pirates come and get it. That's what that's about. We're not, we're not stewarding what we have. So somebody else comes and hijacks it. Hello? can't blame them. You're the one who left it. You lay your purse down. You lay your identity down. You lay your credit cards, your credibility down. Don't be surprised if the enemy takes it. We've got to be diligent. We've got to hear from the Spirit in this stuff, right? And it's all in your dreams and in the prophetic. He's going to talk. You all hear from God. You're just trying to figure it out, right? I love it. All right. So, um, yeah, never a stock answer. So, um, you know, the common dreams explained will give you a place. It's like a, a launching pad, right? It's a place to jump off of. And then you got to hear by the Spirit what your dreams are about. Hear by the Spirit. Spirit's talk, going to talk to you. He's going to tell you what you need to know. Okay. We're doing, we're doing good, eh? Ha! 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 Woo! Okay, now God's very into riddles, and I don't get it because I don't like it. I never understand what he's saying. But he's big into riddles and plays on words, you know? I mean, I'm like, uh, 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 this is too much work, right? But you have to be careful not to work. And this is another thing. We need to learn to get out of our heads. Lots of, lots of my students here, get out of your head. Let's get out of your head. Let's learn. You've learned to compartmentalize in lots of things. Let's learn to compartmentalize what you know about things. Like you know this about God. Lay that down. Put it over in that compartment. Shut it up. Lock it for a minute. And let's go over here. Let's go over here and look at what he really wants to show you about the fullness of who he is. Listen, those four living creatures stand before the throne. They are on the floor, right? They get up, they look at an aspect, a characteristic of God, and they go, oh, they're so overwhelmed that they fall down and they cry, holy, holy, holy. They get up again and they see, and for infinity, they'll be seeing new aspects and characteristics of our God and saying, holy, 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 because he's too big to put in a box or just in 66 books. Did I just offend you? Listen, we can stir some religions, religious stuff up here if we need to. Right? Don't go regurgitating scripture at me. I don't want to hear what you memorized, what is not real and operating through your life and coming to me by the Spirit of God because it's what I need. Don't you come and start telling me all these stories about, you know, I, I, that drives me crazy. People just regurgitate scripture, and they think that that's going to get her done. Listen, the word itself says it's the law and it's death. Amen. So if you're only looking at the print on the paper, it's the law. In between the lines is the breath of God. The creative breath of God. Hello? Listen, that's where you have to live. 
There were lots of writings about a lot of things that didn't wind up in the Holy Bible. Whoa, I'm really in dangerous. I'm in such dangerous territory. It's so dangerous. I mean, I'm looking at the, the writings of the Asher and Enoch, and I'm like, but what about all this stuff? And what about the supernatural? And what about what's going on? What's God wanting to do? Because it's not all just right there. The Word says if, I, if, if everything had been written about all of God's works and Jesus' works, it would fit, fill every library on the earth. Can we let God be God and step into who he is? I'm getting the, it's time, so I'm going to shut down. Lord, I just released everybody in this place a fuller capacity to receive in their dreams, even tonight. Lord, in visions, Father, in every dimension and every realm, by your frequency and the fullness thereof, in Jesus' name, Yeshua HaMashiach. Thank you.